Well, I thought, well, why not do a little bit of scroll sawing? That's what I thought. So that's what we're going to do. And it's, um, yeah, I think it's going to be quite cool. So this is my scroll saw, and this is a Craftsman 22-inch scroll saw. It's actually quite old, um, but I completely refurbished it and what have you. And put, I had to put a new motor on it down the bottom here, which you probably can't see. Um, but it does a job. The only thing I would say about it is the blade clamp's a little bit laborious to change the, you know, the blade, to sort the blade out or to um, insert the blade into a hole so you do internal cuts. But today what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a puddy cat. And this is a, a Ghibli, it's a, I think it's a Japanese style um, cartoon character. Anyway, that's a Ghibli cat. So first of all we need to transfer this onto this piece of oak for which we're going to cut out. Now there are various ways of doing it. One is you could use carbon paper but we're going to use some spray adhesive but also some tape. Now this is just typical decorators tape, mask and tape and um, so what we're going to do is first of all I'm going to look at this I think okay then it's going to be about there I want to mask and tape this first. So why am I doing that? Well the reason why I'm doing that is to make it a lot easier in the long run to remove the um, well the template itself and that's just been printed out on a laser printer um, in on my computer uh, yeah and now I need to apply that to my piece of wood this is a rough whole bit of oak but it's ideal for these sort of little jobs because they're really tiny and that's going to go on there like so so the reason why I use the masking tape like, so that, like this is because if I glue that straight onto the bit of wood, like that, with this spray adhesive, or you could use print adhesive, any old adhesive really, um, the problem with that is, is that you've got to get it off somehow, you get left with a load of residue on here. But with the tape, once you've done your scroll saw, you can literally just peel it off. And that takes the template, you know, your little drawing with it, and everything else. So it works really well, it's quite a simple idea, but it works. Um, the other thing about it is it does help lubricate the blade as well, keep the blade cool for some reason. I don't know why that is. But saying that, I still generally um, put a little candle wax onto my template anyway. So I'll use the spray of these. So if you can use Brit stick or whatever else you've got, use the outside tape if you like. Yeah, some people use wallpaper based. But then obviously you've got to let it dry. It's a bit of a pain. So we'll stick it on there like so. And I'm going to apply my template onto there and as you said it's gone translucent and that'll be the solvent in the actual spray. It's not the best spray of these if you can actually put it on and just leave it um, and let it do it that way so it's you end up with two surfaces a bit like uh, Evo stick you know, contact adhesive but I'm not doing like that I'm just going to apply that on there like so because you know, we're not looking for a permanent fix it's just what holder while I'm actually cutting it. Yeah. Right so that is going to be my base for the phone holder and generally speaking, this will then be fixed onto that and I'll make a phone holder. A Ghibli phone holder. A puddy cat, that it is. So, I'm making sure it's lined up okay. I don't want to put my template right on the edge of the bit of timber unless that's been re recently cut. And the reason for that is it'll split along the bottom. Because the, obviously it'll dry there much faster than anywhere else. Look at this, all sticky. So, I'm just going to find something, put this one side, or put it in the vice. Hope it doesn't stick. <laughs> like we put that on there like that. Put that in there like that. And then squeeze that up in a couple of minutes and let that dry. Now, this saw is saw. Now, this saw is probably from the 80s, the American saw. Um, it came with a 110 motor and it had to have 110? No, 120 volt motor and then it had to have um, a transformer to, so you could actually use it. And to cut with this saw, basically I've got a foot pedal down here and I need to turn the saw on here. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look, it's on. Um, and there's two parallel arms and the idea is they come up and down together so the blade stays relatively parallel or perpendicular to your workpiece. And we use these blades called fret saw blades, which are very fine, various different sizes, uh, very fine fret saw blades. And they come in all different sizes and types. There's another type of blade that you can get called a spiral blade. 
Now what that is, is it's like a blade that's been twisted. It's like an old like, rat tail file. Um, in some ways these are great for, for certain jobs because you can actually cut in all directions. In other ways they make a rough old job and a very thick cut. But with this type of blade, you can actually move the piece of wood sideways, forward, backwards, in any direction. You don't actually have to twist your piece of wood or your, your piece of timber or plywood, whatever you're using, um, to, you know, to follow your line like you would do with the blade that's in here. But they're slower, um, effectively filing their way through. They're not that great, no. I, I don't like, I, I bought some, tried them, and I haven't used them since. I've got, those ones there haven't been touched. So I didn't like them. I didn't like the whole feel of it. I didn't like the, oh, there's some more there, God, I've got so many of them. Um, I didn't like the feel of them. So I, I tend to just use fret saw blades like these, or scroll saw blades like these. These are hobbies, um, yeah, the Nikwa, uh fret saw blades, and I find they're, they're, they're fine for my job. You can get others as well, like Barco, Barco makes them, they're okay. Um, like these are Barco's, and they come in different sizes, again, basically how many teeth there are um, per inch, but also the, the thickness of the blade as well. Now the saw here is fitted with a couple little bobs I made to it, I'll show you those. All right, here we go, there we go, there we go. So the motor is now a 230 volt motor. That came off another old scroll saw that I had because the one that was on here finally gave up the ghost, the original one with its transformer. At the back here, we have an air pump. And you can probably hear the air pump going um, What that's doing is it's providing the air to blow the dust away near the cut. There's a little pipe here, and I can feel a little stream of air, as you see coming out of that pipe. Now, things were missing on the saw when I got it, such as the hole down. I don't use it anyway, so I don't know I was worried about it. I made a new one, um, but I don't use it. So I don't know why I even thought that was a worry. But hey, I did, so I made one. Um, the, the switch arrangement here was one that came with this motor on the other scroll saw. It could do a little bit more oomph, to be honest, a little bit more power, but that's the job. And on the side here, we also have a couple of little mods that I made. One is a little drill so I can actually do some internal cuts so I can drill the holes to put the blade through and at the bottom there you can see my pedal. It's like a sewing machine pedal, it's an industrial, like an industrial sewing machine pedal. Um, they're not there though, only about 20 quid. So it's definitely worth doing if you're going to have one, a saw at all like that where you want control um, to have that pedal. So I wonder if my uh, well, my little template if it's stuck. Now, the other thing, shall I check that? No, I'll get a couple of minutes, get in a minute. When you install your blade in here, it's installed onto the top clamp and then there's a clamp underneath as well. Now, that's, that's great, but you've got to make sure there's tension. And the tension is done on a knob right at the back here, which I can't really reach that well, so I have to get up every time I want to tension the blade, which isn't very helpful. But you, you get to a point where you. With experience, you'll know how far to take, how tensioned you want that to be. And generally what happens is if you change the blade, you'll take it out or have you. Especially a new blade, you put a new blade in, you'll tension it up the first time, oh that's good. You'll be cutting, cutting away and you'll find the blade will stretch a little bit, so you've got to retension the blade. That's, that's quite common. Well, I find it is anyway. It's either that or I'm a bit pedantic with it, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So, um, yeah, so that is my, my Craftsman uh, saw. Um, oh, I don't think it was an expensive saw in its time, but it's solid. It really is strong. These bearings up here, which are fully adjustable, there's one here and there's one down the bottom here. So you can adjust them, make sure that these are running, you know, very little slop, very little play in the top here. Well, there's no, no play, just flex, a little bit of flex. And the same in the bottom here, yeah, no play at all. So it, it, it's a good saw. I think it's a good saw. It just needs a little bit more finesse regarding these. I could do it with like, a quick release arrangement. Um, to make it a lot easier and quicker to, to swap the blade out. That's my feeling anyway. So, is this ready to be done? So I'll take out my vice, which is behind me. Oh, I've got to squish some baby wipes. Oh, a sticker. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's probably good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. Um, I always wax it. You can use other... Yeah, I'm just a bit of candle wax. Oh, this is actually a bit of um, paraffin wax. It's used for... Um, 
if you preserves that have you, you'll put a wax on top of your preserves, that's what that is, it's a block of wax. Or you can just use candle wax. And yes, it does make it look all grubby. Now there are some details on here that I change whenever I do this because they're too fine um, and wood has a grain and they the details will just um, well, they'll snap off. And that's the whiskies. So what I tend to do, I make them a lot, lot almost like little stumps, a lot, lot, lot shorter because it, they're never going to stay on like that. Even when you cut them, they can just snap off. Um, also, I don't know if you can see that line on the bottom, that, oh, you might not be able to see it, but on the bottom of the cat, I've extended the base a little bit and thickened up the tail at this point here because that's now a vulnerable point because the grain's going this way, you see. So where the grains, you haven't got a lot of meat there, so perhaps people can actually accidentally knock that. Let's bring that a bit higher. There we go. <laughs> Arr, Jim and Ed. You want here? Oh, Conser oh, Conservator! Is this a private video? I don't think so. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> no, because you found it. Can't be that private. Hope you're well, buddy. I'm just I'm going to be cutting out a buddy cat. Yeah, this is a Ghibli uh, buddy cat. So I think it's like a Japanese style cartoon or something. And it's going to be a phone holder. So basically, that's going to be attached that way round. Well, yeah, uh, onto that as well. Um, but first of all, I need to cut out the cat. We could be using a scroll saw. It's so hot at the moment. Just constantly drinking. I'm not drinking alcohol, so. Um, I haven't had any alcohol for a bit now, for a while now. At the moment, it's quite big. So I'm going to cut, get it down in size a bit. So I'm not, when I'm doing my turns, I'm not going to be like back in my belly and then affecting, you know, damage, you know, making the cut worse. So, um, let's get to it, shall we? <laughs> You need to sort of relax. Otherwise, what you'll find is you'll be pushing on that blade, which you obviously the blade then doesn't actually do the work for you. You're trying to force it through, and that's when the blade will heat up and break. Now, I'm getting to a point now where I've got these all these little short whiskers. Let's bring it a bit closer so you can see. Might make more sense. There you go. I think that's a bit better. Da -da -da -da. Excuse me. Move that light out of the way because that just overexposes one spot. So now we're going to create some little whisker stumps.
I'm not exactly following the line, I've got my secondary line here. So. So you've got a bit of artistic license in places as well. Like I say here, I want to make it thicker because the grain is going that way and the tail will literally break off. And also I need to make it a little bit more space or more of the tail and also the cat so I can, I can mount it without it breaking off. Whenever you're cutting with the grain, the actual blade itself is trying to clog up all the time, so it's um it's actually hard going with the grain and against the grain. Don't, don't, because the the sawdust and the cut it's it's more aggressive across the grain, so it's quicker and easier. <laughs> So a sew so machine. is in the pudding. Now if your blade or your saw is working well you're not pushing too hard um, you should be able to just push this straight out of the actual which you can. So it, it tells me that the actual blade is cutting perpendicular to the top you know to this actual um, saw top which is meant to so I was quite happy so we've got a, <laughs> a male so we've got a female and I've got the male. 
So I should be able to push that all the way through without it sticking. And if that's the case, you saw it set up well. If that makes any sense. Because obviously if it's at an angle, it would lock up. But certain areas will be thinner than others. So that's how it is so far. And that will be mounted. It's got to be ebonised just yet. And that's got to be mounted there on there like so. And the idea is the phone sits into the slot and then rests on the back of the cat. That is the idea. So what I've got to do now, I need to cut the eyes. Oh no, don't cut the eyes. And the nose. To do that, I have to remove the blade. But before I do that, I have to drill some holes. And I have my drill here. It's not the best drill for the job. Because there is a special drill that actually, it's almost like a little plunge drill. And all it does is create little holes, perpendicular to the actual face of the drill. So I've got to kind of like, oh, I don't know, look at that right. I could do it on the pillar drill, mind. Because I need to make sure that my hole is perpendicular to the face. Which I'm fairly com comfortable with, that is. And same with the eyes. I'm drill its eyes. Now, normally I do it on the block and do it down, but because obviously I want to uh, show it a little bit easier. The other thing you want to do is draw for your finger. That's, that's a really silly idea. That's pretty perpendicular, that's good. And the next one. Now if it was um gonna if it wasn't gonna be black, I I have done in the past just pyrographied pyrographied use a pyrography iron to actually mark the eyes in any little details. If it was going to be black, you wouldn't see it. It's going to be ebonised using iron, uh, iron sulphate. Is it iron sulphate? Or sulphate or iron then? Or oxide, or iron oxide. Oh, I'm in there. Basically, I, I get the, um, some wire wool into a pot with some white vinegar. Or brown vinegar, any vinegar in fact, acid. And what that does is it'll then... Um, Take the iron out of the uh, yeah, it dissolves into liquid, and the 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 oak will react or turn black. So it's quite clever, really. This one next, the blade. So it comes out like so. I'm gonna poke it into his eyes. Oh, meow. Like so. Tighten up. Take the blade up again. Flick it. I do it to, to the two. Tuning a piano or guitar. And now we have to cut the eyes out. We'll slow it down a little bit. So use it down the bottom. Here's a speed controller. And now I need to cut the waste areas of the eyes out. This is quite tricky, this bit is, because there's not much room for error. turn, oh, do that. I need to make sure that I'm actually holding it, but um, allowing the blade to turn on itself. So I'm not pushing forwards basically, otherwise you'd end up, instead of being like a, a fairly sharp angular cut, it'd end up being, um, well, a rounded cut, which is not what we want.
clean it up. Take the tension off the blade again. Hook it into the other eye. So this bit can be quite laborious. Modern saws have a, like a lever arrangement, so it's like a quick release. That still does the job, and how often I use it doesn't matter. To the nose. Sometimes I do the nose on the pillar drill, and I actually just use the side of the blade and move backwards and forwards on the actual a side of the side of the drill bit um, to create an, an oval nose. But we're going to use the scroll saw. Jeez, I hope you'll be okay. Oh, who's going to be out? Who's it? Ah, oh, Gingers. The company I work for has been acquired by another. Oh, God, no, really. And and it's official uh, next... Official. And it's official next week. We've got more information. I hope still... Oh, croggy. Yeah, I hope you're... I hope it, yeah, I hope the service is right. Everything... Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I, it makes me nervous whenever they do... Th you know, have a bit of a shake up. If somebody moves there, what make cuts, don't they? It seems if it's a buyout. Ah, 
actually. Some um, has anyone heard from Geraldine? You you know what I mean, don't you? Um, Glasgow, or oh, Glasgow conservator. Um, uh, I hadn't heard from her for a while. I sent her a message on uh, Discord. So she's okay. These whiskers won't last long. No, they won't. That's why I, I generally fire them right back. Because they get knocked off. Because the grain's going that, that, that way, it's not. So if you look at the original design, the original design actually they're quite long. Because um, it's not you know, designed for wood. I've actually knocked them right back. But what I tend to do is I tend to um, fire them right back as well. A bit of sandpaper. You know, like a, a bit like an emery board. Like those little nail file things. If you fire them right back. Just little stumps. Because <laughs> that just breaks straight off. In fact, one of them has broken a little bit already, that one there. But I follow, I, I clean it all right, right off. Probably I need something there to cut against. So I need, I need a little bit of volume there with the, with the saw. Otherwise I'm, not, otherwise, I'm not cutting anything. So I tend to just to clean them up with the... Uh, that one will probably be a bit stronger. Because of where it is. And this one is. But the, that one, these two middle ones are really thin. And they will just snap off because the grain's going across the grain. Um, sometimes I also I need to get a bit of super glue. Just soak a bit of super glue into the end, but I can't on this because it's just going to be um, ebonized. And if I put any super glue on it, I'll just um, well, I'll just resist it, resist the ebonization in those places, and it'll go black. So you can't do it on that one. So anyway, my point about this um, tape. If you remember, I've put a load of tape on there. This tape here. Now the purpose of that is, is so when I get to this stage. I can easily remove the template um, without leaving a load of residue behind, the glue residue. So if I glued it straight onto the actual wood itself, I would have had a load of gunk to clean off. Sometimes it's not a problem, so I'll just put it onto my linen sander. Um, but as you can see, I can just peel that off and it removes the glue that held the template down. And, and also, like I said, that actually helps lubricate the blade, which helps you cut a bit quicker. You can see what's happening there. So it does work. I use that sort of technique a lot. There was another scroll saw that, that, that put me onto it. Um, I can't remember his name now. Terrible names I am. I forget my own. Okay. Oh, that. Two faced. Got a two faced cat. There you go. Like so. And as you can see, they are, the, the whiskers are. They, they won't, it won't be finishing off that size. Finishing off that size. It, it, they won't be left like that, no. They're going to be, they'll be filed down with an emery board. Well, I say emery board, it's literally just sandpaper glued to a little bit of stick. That way, I, I basically have a few of them. And I, that one, see, that one's not so bad. The bottom one's not so, that one's not too bad. It feels a bit... That one's... Yeah, you feel that they... they sorry, you feel that they'll probably to break off. But usually, they usually have them just like, like a little stump, so there's like, yeah. So that they're there, but they're not, if you know what I mean. No, it's not. I just someone's asked me to make, make them another one, so um, I thought I'd just do it as a video. The only thing I think I've used the wrong template because it looks too small to me. But normally a little bit bigger on this, this this particular cat. So I've got more than one template. I've got a funny thing that cat's a little bit on the small size. But if it actually um, does the job, I might adapt the base to suit. As long as the phone doesn't fall over. <laughs> <laughs> that would be no good at all. But I'm fairly certain I've got a larger version of this cat. I, think, uh, I picked the wrong one out. <laughs> but anyhow, so the bird to cut it again, make it something else. Our gingers for my um oh Etsy. I, I just I, it should be in the post box at the moment. Actually, it might, might be here by now. I've got an electric base. Make a dog. I have made a dog. Actually, I've got a dog on my thing as well. It has. I've sold one dog. <laughs> sold loads of cats. And loads of Star Wars ones as well, Tunes. So it's, um, yeah, that, that, those ones are done well. The Star Wars, especially. Uh, Death Star. Uh, like, yeah, there's my template, which I think looks like a bit like a fish. <laughs> Some weird fish. <laughs> so, my next stage, I'm going to do, I'm going to have to mix some stuff up, which will be for tomorrow now. Because my other one's dried up a bit, it's gone a bit manky. So uh, I'm going to, yeah, uh, I'll send you a picture of my dog and you can make one for me to do that. Why not? Do it, send it over.
you could make a phone stand with a wireless charger. But yeah, I, um, I did. Uh, one of my customers who ordered one of these, it's actually somebody who's actually on the other channel actually as a subscriber, and um, they kindly ordered a. Um, was it a cat? I think that was a cat as well actually. That was a cat. That was the other style of the cat though, wasn't that one? It's was more like in front. Same Ghibli, um, Ghibli cat, but different style. But the. Um, he wanted me to router it in a way so he could put a cable in and a, and a little plug in it, but he's got to sort that bit out. The pro what I need to find actually, for that to work, I need to find a kind of a, uh, a fitting, like a USB C fitting. That I could fit in here neatly, not just like trying to uh, get a USB C such as this one and somehow make that work. Um, there must be there must be something out there that you can actually use. Uh, it's got to be in there. You know. What's there? Stay, stay. My charger. So yeah, that would be quite a good idea. So um, you can then have mobile phones, phones chargers. See, a lot of people you say they use their mobile phones for like like a clock beside the bed or something like that. Do you mean alarm clocks and stuff? So if you've got something like, you know, a phone holder, you know, to, suit, to stick your phone in, and these are quite weighty, so they're, you know, they're quite, yeah, it's a solid oak base, so you put the little rubber bungs on the, on the bottom, they don't, they don't move anywhere. So, um, yeah, well, that's what I use, I've got, I've got those Star Wars ones that I use, <laughs> obviously. Uh, what got? Uh, you can make a phone stand, a wireless charger built in, I could do that. A wireless charger built in. Must be devices for that. I've got to think. Oh. Right, right, Max says conservator. Could you pause while I popped into my local little? <laughs> Cheeky van. You could do. You could do a live. You could do a live stream inside your little. You got any oil? Oh, conservator. You haven't heard from some. some oh, okay. You can make a phone stand, the wireless charger built in. Yeah, I hope, yeah, Gingers, I hope you, you know, you, your job is secure. It probably is, it's just, you're, probably, you're probably worrying too much. They can want to assess the situation anyway, they won't really want to know what's going on, on really, until they've um, lived with the business for a while, I wouldn't have thought. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, I've got my um, what's my phone holder over there? So I'll tell you what, I, I can't really get to do more with this. I need to ebonise that, and I need to make my fluid. But I'll just show you my what I've done so far with the greenhouse because I'm quite pleased how that is looking. Hopefully, the internet is going to um, be okay. So if you keep moving about, it, it seems to want to uh, not move about with you. I'm quite happy with this adapter. This new adapter I got for my phone it seems to work quite well regarding the audio. I oh, push that back in. Apart from it just came out. Get back in there. All right. Yeah, it seems to work okay. So I'm going to go and sh we're going to come outside. Um, I'm going to show you how far we got with a greenhouse regarding the poly tunnel. Um, it ain't finished yet, but I'm quite pleased how it's coming along. So I've um, now put the frame in. Where's that? Get that way there. I need to find the reverse camera. There you go. I now put the uh, end frames in because what we're going to have is there's going to be two vents either side of a central door. So um, there'll be some more verticals to go in, and then we'll have two vents so we can leave them open just at the top. Because what we did before is we just have to have the um, doors open all the time for ventilation, and the bit of cat goes in and poop everywhere. So I want to keep the cat out if I can. So that's how far we've got so far. And that was an old garage, like a plastic garage thing. Um, but the frame was quite good. And the garage was rubbish, as in the cover. So I thought, oh, make it into a poly tunnel, replace the old one we had. And it's, yeah, just got to tighten the cover by moving the poles up and I'll straighten all the poles out while I'm doing it. And I've started putting tomatoes in and peppers to get them out of the other greenhouse. And I've, they, they were a lot taller than that, but I bury them deep really deep sort of like half the plant in into the ground so i can find water easy. you get more root on your plant because you can do that with tomatoes and if you can see on the back there there's there's peppers that have now been moved in as well 
thing is, they're getting, well, everything's getting stunted. Now, these potatoes will need digging up at some point, but not just yet, so I'll get them a little bit bigger. What bigger potatoes? Yeah, but um, I think it's coming on, I think it's alright. Then, then I've got that other greenhouse to sort out, that's scaring me. But regarding what we're, we're trying to do is, um, well, we want to hide, yeah, because we want to do a lot more video in the garden, especially on the other channel as well, the um, uh, Earth Trifle. Um, we've got our, these are four beans, which are just now coming up. I know there's, I know there's a load of weeding to do, uh, they're now coming up. I've also put tomatoes there as well, because we put in plastic on top of this, so our tomatoes have a bit of a hat. Got to have a hat that they have. And um, this will all be coming up as well, because with the old greenhouse used to come right up to the end here, you see. So although we've got less ground space in this greenhouse, because it's a slightly smaller frame, we had the frame, you see, it, it is a lot, lot taller. So we can grow them a lot, lot higher. Provided we can feed them enough and give them enough support, that'll be fine. Um, but over here, where it's really messy, what we're going to do is, we're going to, this bed here, we're going to dig all this out. I'll put a load of vinegar weed curry stuff down, that seems to be working. Um, and that's all going to be dug up, so that'll be one big square bed instead of the grass. And then once this is sorted out here, once it's dug up here, this will be a path, here, grass path, which will then lead link to this grass path, and I'm going to widen that so I get my tractor down. Um, and that way we can get access. And over there with the actual greenhouse, we're going to remove the end section because it got damaged by the wind anyway. Um, so we can get through with the uh, tr tractor mower. And that way I can get a round trip all the way around behind the solar panels, across it, um, down here, up there, but also up this way as well. And that way I can cut down the grass like Caroline and it cuts with the um, walk behind machine, which is fine, but it's just, you know, we've got to, we, need to, we need to be trying to make things easier. Now this is quite interesting. If anyone knows uh, farming or what have you, well this is our drink, one of our drinkers, um, which is spring fed drinker this is, yeah. Like, do you like my cascading, yeah, my cat, my... normally this is flowing like a good one this is. But what's happened now, for some reason, well I know why, because it's been drought. This is very dry, there's ten regions here in France, and this has really slowed down. Um, so that's our, that's our main drinker. <laughs> It's cascaded into that old bath. Cascaded into that old bath and into the pond. <laughs> so it's just holding water back. And we're going to put another one, and that, we're going to, not another bath, but another water container that we're going to put one behind there as well. It's all heat problems, I know. But how this is fed, it's quite interesting how it's fed actually. It's actually fed from a pipe which goes under the ground. All the way down here, under the ground, under the ground, under the ground. It's literally gravity fit, because we're on a hill, we're in the outside of a valley. Then behind the house, or behind that barn there, um, which is behind that greenhouse, there's a spring. And that pipe um, is in that spring. And so, so effectively the gravity, the water's leaking through that pipe, you know, trapping through that pipe via gravity. And it's constantly filling up hair. And then at the, either overflows with that little, into that... Um, behalf or it overflows down that pipe at the back here there's a pipe here and then that goes into the ditch to feed that pond as well so it's kind of what I say, it's quite clever so it's always got water and it usually never runs that slows down which is slowing down a lot quicker at that moment for some reason which is very concerning because that same spring not that there but that same spring which is over there feeds our house the, the well for the house so that's not very helpful, that is a bit of a worry. So, excuse the mess, because obviously I've been doing the greenhouse. Bit by bit. One day we'll be, one day, we might be finished. So we have these solar panels over there, we have solar panels over there, we've got solar panels over there, we've got solar panels around the back, um, and they, they come into um, some little inverters, micro-inverters, but also into this inverter in there, you see that unit in there? which runs to the batteries and also for the evenings. It's a bit of a, it's a hybrid system. It's got, we're trying to get all, sort all our eventualities. So if there's any problems, yeah, we, we always got power. And we've still got EDF. So we do have EDF power. So we, uh, we've got, yeah, we're backed up basically, which is very, very handy. And that comes over here, well, it, it stops at that pole. For some reason, I don't know why, it's over there. Because those cables that are going into the woods, down the bottom of our valley, across to our, our field, unfortunately, 
our field stops at the end of the cables. Be, I would like to have, there's a lake in the corner, um, on the, in that woods, right in the corner, which is an old mill, constant running water. I mean, literally running like a good, um, uh, we could have, we might have to run five to 10 kilowatts off that. But no, it's not ours, swines. I don't think they sell either. So yeah, but we're quite fortunate, it's quite a nice place to live. Excuse the mess. What? Uh, this is my uh, machine that we use to cut the grass. I've had this ferrous now for, or oh, since 2006, 2007, 2007. It's been a good machine. Anything my um, brain fortunate is it's petrol. Uh, I'd like gas, really. I could convert it. Um, be a lot cleaner to run. But that's what it is, it's 010, so it's like driving a, like driving a tank. It's fucking really the flipping flip thing, things. So you're not careful. But mess everywhere. Look at this. Let's set my bench. Oh, oh dear. Well, there you go. There's a little tour. So we've got a greenhouse, which we're quite happy about. Um, so, okay, I've made my cat. I'm going to call that it for the moment. I might, might go alive again later. Um, I'm trying to keep them sort of relatively short. So they have a point. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no point. Well, there's a point, but it's just you know live for the sake of being live. But hey, so there we. So there you go. I'm gonna say ta 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 ta.